Hello and welcome back to the Ascent Cycling Podcast for the daily recap number 17, following today's stage of the Giro d'Italia, a stage between Canate and Sigadiala, which had a lot of hype and boy did it deliver. Uh, Joe, how are you first? Very well, thank you. How are you, Guillaume? Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm good. I'm much better than Egan Bernal, that is for sure, because we have had an absolute masterclass today of one team, and that was back exchange because, sure, they don't take the win. Dan Martin wins today at the Sega Diala uh, ahead of, I believe, Joe Almeida from the Grand Quick Step and Simon Yates. But we've had the first crack of the Maria Rosa Egan Bernal losing time for the first time on this Giro d'Italia. I believe he, lo- he loses about one minute, one minute uh, ten at to Joe Almeida, about 50 seconds to Simon Yates. What a stage. For me, I think it's the best mountain stage of the race so far. What an unbelievable stage. We had the breakaway, you know, they took a while to form, over 30 or 40 kilometres. When they did go, they got a fair lead, but clearly Bike Exchange were pretty intent on riding for the stage. They put a few guys to the front and rode pretty much all day, to be fair to them. Um, putting pressure on Simon Yates, you have to say, but he he was more than able to deliver on that final climb. But, you, I mean, the breakaway came into the Segadiala a climb of 11 kilometres, almost 10% average gradient, with a one-minute lead over the Peloton. For Dan Martin to hold that advantage and win the stage, it's an unbelievable ride from him. It really is. And now he is the next rider to complete the trilogy, a stage at all three Grand Tours. So firstly, we have to commend Dan Martin an unbelievable breakaway win. Indeed, indeed. A win from the breakaway. A uh, breakaway that had the likes of Yanni Moscon, uh, the stage local, which is probably why he was allowed to be in the breakaway. You had the likes of Antonio Pedrero, and you had the um, Azra jersey of Geoffrey Bouchard, who um, managed to get the 40 points at the Paso San Valentino, although uh, having looked quite in difficulty uh, at the start of it, he did come back and basically pushed to, um, to preserve his jersey. Uh, a Paso San Valentino in which we saw Remco Venepol being dropped from the peloton very early on. Uh, and then, in an interesting way, he came back with like 2k until the summit and he looked decent when he came back. Uh, sadly for him, he got caught in a crash following the summit of the Paso San Valentino. Crash uh, involving Giulio Ciccone, involving one rider from Bahrain, there was two riders from Bike Exchange and Remco Venepol. Um, Ciccone and the Vinopoul did, I mean, lose everything here. Uh, I think Remco finishes with the Gruppetto. Chicone, uh, w- w- such bad luck. He came back in that downhill portion. I mean, first of all, he had a mechanical issue mm-hmm. at the yeah. summit of the Passa San Valentino, came back on the peloton, crashed, reached the peloton again, had to change bike, and at the start of the Sega Diada, just the legs weren't there. He dropped with Alexander Vlasov, disappointing there as well for the Russian. But yeah, Shikone, just bad luck after bad luck. I, I think I said on Twitter at one point that this was like either it was like Nibali's time, and two seconds after that, we saw Nibali having an issue with Chikone, and then it kept on carrying on. So, Julio, sorry. So unlucky for Julio. Literally, like you say, you, you've summed it up perfectly there. A day of pure bad luck, the mechanical, the crash, and the descent. Needed another bite change. I don't think he had any teammates because all of his teammates had crashed with him um, and got stuck behind. So, you know, he was he was doomed, I think, from that moment. And we knew he would lose time on the Sega Diala. And sadly, he, he's pretty much out of the, the podium hunt right now. So a real shame because Chicone's ridden so well at the Giro. Absolutely. He's now in P10, more than 11 minutes behind Egan Bernal. Uh, and if we're being honest, I don't think he's going to be able to gain any position because... Although Tobias Foss and Joel Meda are actually most likely Tobias Foss is probably weaker than him in the mountain element. We do have a 30 km time trial and Julio Chicone was expected to use about two minutes um, on set time trial. So yeah, I think Chicone's hopes of getting anything more than the top 10 haven't sadly gone today. Yeah, they're gone. They're gone for sure. But like you say, Vlasov drops early. He lost a lot of time as well. Some other riders, they tried to follow the rhythm. It was Jonathan Castroviejo from Ineos really pacing quite hard on the early sections of the Sega Diala, and we, I don't think we were even halfway up, and we saw Hugh Carthy of EF completely bonk, and he cracked, he finished behind Alex Vlasov even today, he was dropped much earlier, much earlier in the climb than Carthy, so Carthy, after looking pretty good into Cortina D'Ampezzo, and he started the day on the podium, he's another big loser from the day. He is. I mean, the riders that looked good on Cortina D'Ampezzo didn't necessarily look good today. Hugh Carthy, mm-hmm. Roman Bardet, 
who was also who finished third in Continental Penso, got dropped with Ducarthy. Ducarthy, though, uh, I mean, we have to mention one rider from EF, Alberto Vettiol, who got dropped after Carthy, technically speaking, because he pulled back to get back to Ducarthy. What a ride and what a giro from Alberto Vettiol, the rider from EF. Yeah, it's such a shame that he's been tied to Hugh Carthy for the entire Giro. He could have hunted stage wins. He could have been challenging mm-hmm. for that stage alongside Dan Martin in the breakaway. He could have challenged for so many other stages as well. It's such a shame for him. I really feel they could have let him off the leash. But when you see how strong he is as a domestique, I guess you can understand why they want him there with Hugh Carthy. But sadly for them, I think the podium could be gone. There's still a long way to go, but he's a few minutes behind uh, the podium places now. And as those guys started to struggle, and Castroviejo was still on the front, I believe, it was Simon Yates who launched the big move, the big attack. Egan Bernal jumped in his wheel, and the only other rider who was able to follow was Bernal's teammate, Danny Martinez. Yeah, Dan Martinez was probably the strongest Colombian today. And then, I mean, you, there, there was an attack by Joel Meda, which has to be mentioned. Joel Meda did attack before Simon Yates. Uh, they pulled him back. Uh, and, and then... Uh, we were in the trees and we saw the head bopping from Egan Bernal. We were like, okay, interesting. And within five, six seconds, Bernal was not with Yates and Joel Meda anymore. Dan Martinez had to come back to Bernal and Twitter blew up. We were like, oh shit, Be- Bernal's like having an issue. We didn't plan this. This wasn't meant to happen. This, this, this hasn't been in the script. But once again, the Giro throwing a curveball with four stages left. The GC battle well and truly on the way as Egan Bernal could not follow the rhythm at first of Danny Martinez. Then they had to be pulled back by the likes of Bahrain with Peo Bilbao and Damiano Caruso. Caruso climbing at his rhythm, but today just manages to secure basically a P2 on the GC. Um, I mean, I don't know, secure a podium at least uh, because he doesn't have a four-minute lead on P4 now. But yeah, Bernal completely out of it. I don't know if it was maybe an, an issue with like the legs, if it was his back issue coming back. Mm. Uh, he did talk about it yesterday, I think. He said that the, the problem was still here. He still has some pain. Um, but is it a one-time thing? Are we going to see it happen in the upcoming stages? Maybe not tomorrow, because tomorrow should not be too much of an issue. But stage 19 and 20 could potentially be a, a tough day again for Egan Bernal. They certainly could. I I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. At that moment, I thought we were going to see Bernal attack away, cruise up the roads and take another stage win as he has done in the mountains so far because he's looked so comfortable on every single climb this race so far. That's why it was so shocking. And he didn't just slowly drop off the wheel. He cracked. He cracked massively and dropped back very, very quickly. It was was pretty surreal to see, I must say. Um, And Simon Yates cruised up the roads. Simon Yates cruised up the roads and yeah, the questions are going to be asked now. Is it the back? I think it might be. Um, and will it happen again? You know, and to this point, I think everyone would have said there's a 99% chance that Egan Bernal wins this Giro d'Italia, if not 100%. Now we have a race. We have a real race because Caruso is still right there. And Simon Yates, he is, I mean, he looks done in Cortina D'Ampezzo at the high altitude. But here, he was electric today. Absolutely. I think... Um, Simon Yates did struggle with the weather in Cortina so yeah. um, nowadays we're getting to a, a bit more um, of a spring weather of, of a May weather uh, not the boxer but really May weather mm-hmm. um, and I mean it, it's promising for the upcoming two mountain stages we'll have I think stage 19 might not be the toughest one stage 20 though you could see like chaos happening from like the first half of the race and if Bernal isn't feeling good that day he could not only do the Giro, but lose the podium. We all know that the Giro loves to see curveballs. I mean, you said there was a 99% chance of him, of Bernal winning the Giro. I'm pretty sure that was the same odds for Kroevek before he crashed uh, in 2016. Simon Yates is also very, very well aware of, of how happen- of what happens when you lose a Giro at that point. He basically had the 2018 Giro won uh, before that stage on the Fenestre. So, so nothing is ever finished on the Giro until it actually comes to an end. Um... But Bernal can today thank Danny Martinez because there's the images of him just giving him support, shouting at him, giving him motivation. <sighs> Unreal. What a ride today by Danny Martinez. Yeah, Danny Martinez, he oh, he looked like he had the legs to even go past the eights, past Almeida and past Al Martin for the stage win. He looked to have diamonds in his legs today. He really did. And he was trying to wait for Bernal and he it, it looked like he couldn't go slow enough for Bernal to catch up. He felt... That good. And when Bernal was on the wheel, like you say, that image of Martinez turning around and giving him massive support, geeing him up, 
for the final few kilometers, that has to be a massive help. And you have to say that must have really saved Bernal some big time today. Having Martinez there and him riding so well in support because it's one it's one thing having a rider there, but to have a rider supporting you that much in the final kilometers of a mountain stage when you're cracking for the first time at your first Giro d'Italia, you have to commend Danny Martinez. He was unbelievable. 100%. I think when when you start a season, obviously Danny Martinez was new in the team coming in this year from EF. And I think you go to training camps. You have basically the entire season based around one race and you know who your leader is. I think there is a sort some sort of a bond being created. And I mean, we saw that in the final five uh, in the final like two kilometers of Segadiala because if we're going from a purely selfish point of view Dan Martinez today if he doesn't wait for Bernal would be P4 of the GC in my opinion I think he would have gained that minute mm -hmm. on Vlasov but like Martinez could have gone for him but he did decided to stay with his leader and give him everything he had both in the legs and mentally as well if Bernal wins the Giro by like 30 seconds uh this Sunday I think he has his teammate to thank Yeah, more than more than agree with that. But you have to say, I think Damiano Caruso, he probably didn't look as good, but he'll, he'll be very happy with this performance. He has extended his gap massively to uh, Carthy, Vlasov, almost everyone else behind Bar, Almeida and Simon Yates, obviously. Um, so I feel like Caruso can be happy with this day. He's still two minutes behind the Maglia Rosa heading into the final few days of the Giro d'Italia. Unbelievable. That that in itself is just unbelievable. And to have Simon Yates riding so well, it's given us all hope that we could have a real, real fight for this Maglia Rosa, which, you know, we all thought was done and dusted. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, like even today, we've had um, a debate, would it, would it be Bernal winning the Giro? Would it be Yates? But Caruso is still here. Sure, he did as well show signs of weakness today. That was to be expected. But... Damiano Caruso isn't a guy that enjoys high percentages climbing. In the upcoming stages, 19 and 20, he won't have that. If Bernal has yet other issues, Caruso can hold on to Yates. Even, let's say, even if he loses 1 minute 40 across two stages, I do believe that Caruso is a better time trialist than Simon mm -hmm. Yates. I think Damiano Caruso today may have finished with Bernal, but his hopes of getting anything more than second place have drastically increased. Definitely. And I'd even go as far to say he's a better time trialist than Egan Bernal as well. He's the best of the three, I would say, yeah. in that final time trial. I think that's fair to say. You know, if he starts 30 seconds behind Bernal, even a minute behind in that final 30k time trial, you know, there's hope for him. There really is, because it's a long time trial, a long flat drag to the line. If you have a bad day, you can lose minutes there for sure on that flat TT into Milan. So, yeah, Caruso is here, and he has the chance of winning this Giro d'Italia, which is in itself just unreal to say. You've mentioned three names there. I'm going to throw, throw a fourth into, into the hat here because Joao Almeida, all right, he's now eight and a half minutes down. He's clawing his way back in, but he was the best climber today. He was the mm -hmm. first rider to finish from the Peloton. Obviously, he didn't quite catch Dan Martin and get his first professional win, but Joao Almeida, I did not expect to see such a strong resurgence from him. You know, he's been tied to Remco since Sestela, where he lost four minutes, you know, on a 3K climb. He looks like a different rider right now. He does. And I think every rider on a Grand Tour is entitled to have a day off. What happened sadly for Joao Almeida is that he got his day off early where the rider that could have fought for the leadership did not. And therefore he got tied to Remco Evenepoel. Had he not, I think Joao Almeida could have been up there probably right now on the podium. Yeah, it's a fair shout. I mean, he's probably lost five minutes, I'd say, just waiting with Remco. You know, he's probably lost, or maybe a bit kind, maybe three or four minutes. Definitely, he's lost a lot of time and he'd be a real podium challenger without losing that time there. So it's unlucky for Joao, but I must say, he looks like he could win a stage and finally get his first pro win across that stage 19 or 20. He is, he is riding so well right now. All right, one more rider I'm going to mention uh, because I didn't see much from him today, but... He finished 12th, Lorenzo Fortunato. He won at the Colan, and today he finished in 10th position, in 12th position, therefore 10th of the non-breakaway riders. That is an incredible performance from him. I mean, he finishes ahead of the likes of Bardet, ahead of Vlasov, ahead of Carthy, ahead of Ciccone. What a ride. I mean, we didn't expect anything from Eolo at the start of this Giro, and the man is fighting for like a top 15 in the GC at this point. Unreal, unreal. I'm I'm really happy for him. 
Yeah, he's riding really well. And Yolo Kamesa, he wasn't the only rider from that team in that group. I think it was Eduard Ravazzi. He was only, I think, 30 seconds behind Fortunato at the end. I think he was looking now 19th place on the stage. But he climbed really well too. So Yolo Kamesa are rising. They really are. And, you know, I think they've got big ambitions to go to the World Tour one day. Um, and they look like they'll need some additions to their squad, obviously. But they do have some nice pieces here. And Lorenzo Fortunato really looks like a breakout kind of gem from this Giro d'Italia so far. I have to agree with that. So taking a look ahead to stage 18 of the Giro d'Italia, I think it could be the final stage that isn't a big GC day now left at the race. Four stages left, and this is the longest stage as well. 231 kilometers, and the first 200k are completely flat. There is literally nothing going on bar one intermediate sprint, about 130k into the stage, but... You know, things get shaken up just a little bit heading into the final 30k. We have a few small hills, only one fourth categorized climb. I think it's called the Castana climb. It's around 4% gradient for 5k, so not particularly steep either. We do have one steeper climb just after, but that is only 1.5k in length. And really, we have rolling terrain, four hills up and down over the final 30k, which will decide the stage. But it's going to be a very long day out in the saddle, that's for sure. And I think a very difficult difficult stage for the peloton to control 100 percent, and i think this is a tough stage to call on whether we'll have a peloton winning or a breakaway it's the dilemma we've had for the past couple of days now but this stage more than any other because who is going to pace for 200 kilometers i don't think any team either wants it or is capable of doing it so we can have a lot of things happening. Are we going to see any attacks in this final 30k? I think it would be suitable for a rider to try and launch some a, a move. Maybe Joe Almeida, for example, could try to attack. Maybe Chicone. We don't know. Like if he's got any legs and wants to try and end up ahead of someone like Tobias Foss in the GC, can try to go for an attack. Maybe a Yanni Morscon, although he might be uh, suited to stay with Bernal following what happened today. This is going to be a very tough stage. Um, the good thing for the peloton, though, has to be mentioned, it's going to be quite a warm day around 25 30 degrees so that's like perfect weather no worries whatsoever the final isn't exactly technical either so we shouldn't have too many chances of having um or potentially crashes uh but yeah a lot of riders tomorrow are stage contenders in my opinion they certainly are i feel like 50 riders or so or even more could win this stage feasibly you know it's a it's a difficult day because we have Bora hands go here they have peter Sagan, but they probably don't have the power or the will to pace for 200k and hope Sagan can win in some kind of sprint in the final. So I really feel like the early break, we're going to win this one. I think there'll be so many riders wanting to get into that group as well. But I have a curveball here, Guillaume. So we have sprinters, we have Gaviria, we have Viviani, uh, we have Moschetti as well as Davide Chimelai as Pete, and, and Peter Sagan too. So if their teams aren't going to pace, can those guys maybe join the breakaway as well? I think so. I think we're going to see one or two sprinters joining the breakaway. I think it was on stage 15, I believe, we had Juan Sebastian Molano in the break. I think there is a shout that we'll see another Colombian from UAE in the breakaway. However, if we've got Gaviria in the breakaway, I think it forces either Chimolai and Sagan to attack, to bridge that breakaway, mm -hmm. or it forces ISN and Bora to pace. So we'll see how that goes, because I'm pretty much certain that UAE is going to try something tomorrow with Gaviria. Yeah, I agree. So we do have that intermediate sprint 134 kilometers in. And the issue is that the Magliacic Camino, it's in Sagan's hands. It's not completely done just yet. You know, if one of those guys, Chimelayo Gaviria, take all the points and Sagan takes none, they're right back in the game for that Magliacic Camino. So I feel like if any of the if any of those sprinters try to get in the breakaway, they all need to go in. Otherwise, their teams are just going to be pacing. So um, I feel like we could see Gaviria, Chimelai and Sagan all in the breakaway tomorrow. I think that will be maybe their goal from the beginning of the stage. You, meant, you mentioned Chimelai as well, his team pacing. He only has four other riders in his team left at the race. And one of them won the stage yesterday. He's, Dan Martin's not pacing on the front for Chimelai for 200k. I'll tell you, tell you that for sure. Um, but I feel like we could have the sprinters joining the early breakaway. And yeah, just so many riders are going to want to get in this group because I think we'll have another breakaway win. I, I do think so as well. And I think if you've got the likes of Chimola, you've mentioned he's only got four riders. I'm pretty sure two or three riders from ISN will actually try and go in the break with him. Uh, I think Dan Martin might be the only rider that won't go in the breakaway for uh, for ISN. I think UAE is most likely going to send someone like Alessandro Kovi as well in the breakaway. He's looked good in this Giro. He's going to try and maybe go for a, a third podium on the race. Maybe Djigoulisi, who looked unreal today in Sega Diala. Um, and I think 
if Bora sends someone, it's going to be Sagan, but the rest of the team doesn't look that good. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens for, uh, for the Maria Chiclamino. Sagan has proven many, many times that he doesn't need anyone to perform, but you never know. Uh, I think Chimolai and Gaviria tomorrow have a decent chance at potentially stopping Peter Sagan from winning yet another points jersey on the Grand Tour. Yeah, that, it's their last chance to try, I feel like, at this intermediate sprint, and they, then they can get close for maybe a second intermediate sprint later on. Um, I, I was going, I was preparing to have a bold claim here and say Ramco Evenepoel could go in the breakaway and win the stage for Tekken quits that but um, as I was preparing that earlier on in the day, he did crash in the descent and look pretty... Uh, pretty battered up a bit and crossed the line in the group essay. So I don't think that's happening. Um, but I was preparing for a Remco attack tomorrow, which would have been uh, quite the sight. Sadly, I don't think that will happen though. I don't think so either. I think we're going to see Remy Cavagna though from the Quick Quickstep in tomorrow's breakaway. So I'm still 2-1 down behind Guillaume in our little prediction game, even after I picked Egan Bernal on the Sega Diala. So I'm not sure what I can do to claw back this deficit at this stage. But... Uh, a few more stages left. Guillaume, I believe you've got your prediction prepared. I do indeed. And I believe that uh, we're going to have a breakaway winning tomorrow in Stradella. Uh, and the rider who's going to win is a rider that already won on this Giro d'Italia. I believe that Andrea Vendrame is going to take the win uh, after 231 kilometers. Joining him on the podium, we'll have a rider from Israel Startup Nation. And that is going to be Patrick Bevin. I think he's got the legs. He's a decent rider on the flat terrain. He sprints well. And he goes over hills quite nicely. So I think he's going to be able to follow Vendrame. And in third position, I'll have yet another Andrea. I'm going to have Andrea Pascolon from Wanty Gobert. Wow. The, the double Andrea. That is not something I expected. I don't think I've got an Andrea on my podium. So to win, I'm going to go for a rider who's expended a lot of energy on the Sega Diala. But I believe he's riding himself into supreme form. I apologise. It's, it's a rider. It's a rider who... Is it Jigo Lissi? It's a rider who always wins at the Giro. Eight stage wins, Guillaume. He wins every year and he's going to get it on stage 18. Diego Ulissi is going to win stage 18 of the Giro. He was fourth from the Peloton on Sega Diala, ahead of Bernal, ahead of almost everyone. You know, if he's climbing like that, mm-hmm. on a mountain like that, what can he do here? So I feel like Diego Ulissi, hilly terrain, suits him down to a tee and uh, we're going to see him win. So he's my pick. I'll go for... Nicholas Arntz of Team DSM in second place. And I shall go for Stefano Oldani of Lotto Suzao. The uh, the two riders of Lotto Suzao who remain in the race. I'll go for one of them in Stefano Oldani in third. Okay. So we have very different predictions. I do like Ulissi. Uh, Ulissi would have been my pick actually at the start of today's stage if he hadn't used that much energy in Sigadiala. Had he had not finished fourth of the peloton, uh, he, he, I was picking him for tomorrow. But I reverted back to Andrea Vendrame. I would have, I needed to back him once, and I didn't when I should have. So mm. hopefully, hopefully Andrea just nices me and gets me a third win, which would put me three one up and potentially winning this competition. Yeah, the the uh, the prestigious uh, ascents prediction competition. Um, yeah, I, I feel like you you can look at it two ways, right? Ulysses, he's expended loads of energy, which means he's going to have nothing left for tomorrow, or. I'm choosing to look at it, hopefully, as in he's in great form and he's going to win the rest of the stages, starting with stage 18. I think both you, you can look at it both ways and you you can be correct on both. But no, it's a good pick. Ulissi for Joe, Andrea Vendrame for your boy. We'll see who wins. Well, we'll see what anyone wins. But anyway, this is where I'm going to wrap up this daily recap of the Giro d'Italia. We do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, then please do leave a like down below and subscribe over on YouTube. If you're watching or listening on your streaming platforms, then do give us a follow, hit the reviews just doing what I do all the time. But yeah, what what's he doing? Like just down below, click on it, show him some support and we will see you without a fault tomorrow for the daily recap, no rating of the Giro d'Italia. Joe, do you have a final word for us? It's Diego's day. It's Diego's day. Have an amazing day, guys. See ya. Cheers.